Hi, you guys. So happy to have you along for the ride today for Enneagram and Marriage. We are so happy to get to be in this new year together. I hope you're having a good start to your year, nearing the end of a very snowy January, except here in Florida, it's very rainy. I hope you are staying warm inside of your homes. I know if you are listening live, many of you are literally cozied up under. I know my sister had 24 inches of snow. Many of you have negative wind chills. Come down to Florida, I will tell you we are in warm weather here, although people here think it's really cold. And I was perhaps seen out today with a winter coat and a ski hat, even though it was probably like 60 degrees. So I'm just laughing at myself a little bit, knowing how your blood changes when you move from Michigan and Chicago, and then you're now resorting to this. But I know many of you will be taking your spring break, so do comfort yourself in some warmth coming your way at some point or get right up to that space heater. But my six wing wants to warn you, be careful, be careful. I remember electric blankets, space heaters, all of the above, and uh, there's always those warnings. So we will talk today about the three desires of marriage now that we have gotten all of your security warnings out of the way, um, just on this very brief episode, because I want to make sure that you guys are well aware of what it really takes to allow yourself some balance, some health, and to come back to a place of joy in your marriage. I think that we lose that so, so much when we get into the days of marriage that can be a little bit more functional and put that form over uh, just even having fun. And I think that we need a balance because I am definitely um, in the busy years with you. And I can absolutely tell you that as a type seven, I will not do a week that doesn't have any fun. It won't happen. I have to have a little bit, even though I am now a quote unquote, you know, woman who is middle-aged, who has teenagers, who could just be like, forget it, my life's over. Um, but you know what? No, I'm still here. And I read a really good book this past week that just really got me thinking deeply, All the Light We Cannot See. Um, I actually read it a couple weeks ago, got to review it this week, got to finish the series, which some of you know I was eking through on like mom carpools when I was waiting in the line. Um, but this reminded me of a great quote, don't you want to be alive before you die, Anthony Doerr? Um, and many of the characters really did live every day to the fullest, like Marie Lau. Marie Loire, who is the protagonist, and um, many did not, who were really sorrowful for that and really did not allow themselves to uh, ever live. Although I will give you a tiny spoiler, it doesn't spoil that much to say that the male protagonist um, did have some time where he shared that he did finally, at the end of his life, really live his life. And I think that that is just so important for all of us to do, to know that um, we can come back to that space of living. And um, that's what I want you to do today is if you've been in that space where you haven't lived to the full and you're just like, okay, I'm just rote memorizing what I need to do every day. I'm getting up and doing it. The desire has sunk down low, Krista. It might be non-existent, you're saying. I want to help you remember that desire. And I'm just reminding you of the three desires today so that you can allow yourself to come back into that balance. And the first one is, of course, the desire desire for safety. So that's why I started you off with like, be safe, you know, don't hurt yourself if you're snow shoveling, hire the little boy down the road who has got a young back and, um, or get your snow blower out. Don't be too proud to ask for help. Or if you're actually healthy for it, let it be part of your workout and enjoy the invigorating feeling. Um, but whatever you're doing, I hope that you are focused in on what will make you feel healthy. I know I'm headed off to my pure bar class in just a few minutes and it is a great part of my day that truly wakes me up and makes me feel like I am stretched and revitalized and it's a joy. And sometimes I do mad fit workouts at home or just take a brisk walk, or sometimes it's not a workout at all. And I'm in a season of injury and it's just rest. Um, but I want for you to be mindful of your safe and well and healthy living so that you can allow yourself the desire to even live and breathe and work. Because when we're not feeling at all well, which let's face it, sometimes that happens too. It's not possible to have desire for other things because you're just off. 
So you have to learn how does your body eat well? How, what kind of food does it support? What uh, makes you feel safe in your home? What makes you feel like you can relax? Do you keep your windows open? Do you shut them? What time of day do you really let down? These are the things that deserve your time and study so that you can figure out how you and your partner can find that safe space together and individually. So that is the first desire of marriage that has to be worked out. And that is that desire for safety. Um, the next desire, and we call that self-preserving in the Enneagram world, is the desire for sex, that desire for chemistry, that desire for wooing, for attracting. And we've been talking about these desires lately because they're so big to every marriage story that when I Enneagram type people, I go along and I find out their desires too, because I know that if we don't figure these out, even if we figure out their type and they start doing personally better, their relationships and their stress levels don't often change because, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, now I'm like looking at my virtues and I'm trying to live them out better and I'm closer to God, hopefully too. But my, my desires and my life blood is weaker because I'm not focused in on how can I balance that safety, the sexual desire, and then the last one we'll talk about in a minute. So make sure you're looking at that, guys. Make sure you're looking to see like, how am I feeling lately in terms of being attractive, in terms of attracting my partner? How about checking in with each other to get a fun date on the calendar? How about making sure that you show up for them in a way that you know makes them feel aroused or vice versa or hopefully both? And how about adding a little spice to your life so that you guys this new year can say, ooh, we have this on the calendar we're looking forward to and something you actually are looking forward to versus just a growth piece. So I think those are essential and I'm doing this with you and I am really excited about that because, you know, the safety one, yes, it's a desire. It feels good to feel safe and we feel alive, but this is a fun one. It gets more sensual. It gets more like this is one of those feelings that you're like, oh, we've been married for a while. We can't revisit that. Yes, you can. You can allow yourself this fun space to just talk that out after the kids go to bed and just say, hey, let's look to see like, how are we doing on our sexual desire? And let's just talk about it and see what we can do to spruce it up. So that's my second challenge to you. And my third challenge to you on this very short Wednesday episode is to make sure that you are allowing yourself some space to uh, find the social strutting again. What really made you feel invigorated at one point and desire for connection with others socially? Um, let's bring that back out again. I know I just wrote to several of my friends um, that I have been meaning to get a hold of, and it felt so good to get some things calendared and to get some things on the way to being calendared. And I've been enjoying, uh, I had a wonderful coffee date with one of our coaches yesterday. And it was really special to be able to really find my people, like the people who you know are truly your friends. And to be able to say like, we're kindred spirits, we have a soul friendship. And that is something I want to pursue with you. Um, also to allow your spouse to be part of that sometimes. What do you guys like to do socially together? I think we have three or four couples that have asked for a double date lately, or we've asked them and we need to get those scheduled. And that's something fun that will be very social for us, but also just fun couple stuff. And it moves your desire around in a healthy way when you start to add other stories in, hear about other people's lives, bouncing ideas off each other, learning new things, learning what foods they're eating, learning where they're going on vacation, learning the trials and tribulation in their lives so you can be thoughtful or prayerful together. This is real living, real supporting, and it allows your social desire to be met too, to say, I want to be in the world. I want to teach. I want to learn. I want to exchange. Uh, I want to volunteer. These are the pieces that really brighten our lives more than we realize. Sometimes you might think, oh, all I want to do in this cold weather is, you know, go to work, hole up at work, then come home and just get in my pajamas and watch This Is Us because, yes, I am in my This Is Us era again. Um, and for those of you who voted for Psych over This Is Us, all I have to say is, come on, guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's okay. I did an Instagram poll and Wes was watching the psych and everyone was like, yes, yeah, psych. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is us though, for real. Um, so some of you were had my back with that. <laughs> so, um, but I really, uh, really, really, really know that that is fun, that we all need our times. You know, we had our fall Gilmore Girls era over here, if you were paying attention and you had your favorite shows going. Um, but now it's also a reminder to you to come out of your shell a little bit. And we've had our time for Cozy Nook. And we've had our time for um, just really hibernating. And we still need a little bit of that. Let's be honest. We have these school days off, etc. But I just want you to remember your friends, even if they have to be Zoom coffee dates, like I said, um, between the homeschooling and the sessions and the podcast interviews that I'm doing right now. Yes, there's a lot of them that are Zoom. But you know what? They're fun or they're deep or they're a little bit of both. And that meets that desire for socialization too. I also love our collective meetings. We've been having a great time in our membership and our coaching certification starting soon too. So if you want to get started on our coaching certification, we have our other courses going. Our e &M class is now in session. That's been great. But our coaches, the coaches and training session is coming up in February. So make sure you check out the show notes for that. I also have a coupon in the show notes for that too. And I am so thankful that I get to teach how to be an Enneagram and Marriage Coach coach because I just got to have a life-changing session for a couple this Monday where I'd been seeing the wife for a while and I got to just give a typing session for the husband. It felt so good to be able to um, brighten their lives with these trainings and I love doing that work. So if you want to be part of that, if you want to do life-changing work, if you want to spend time with me over 12 Thursdays where we talk live for two hours, then check out the show notes. It's such a blast. You can get e &M certified at the end of the day and and even start your own coaching practice or supplement your counseling or coaching practice. So anywho, plan on incorporating these three desires into your life either way and pick something right now from this episode that you're going to add in to bring these three desires closer to the front of your mind and pick one thing you're going to do as you take a deep breath and sign off with me today. So thank you for joining me. Pick your thing you're going to do. And if you want to add some coaching in, come on over to the show notes too. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.